All right, it is Sunday, April 3rd, the year 2022. I'm your host, John Molden, owner at Blood, Sweat, and Tears Concrete. I'm here with my co-hosts, Carly and Magnus Molden, and this is... No Crying in Concrete. Very good, guys. So, Carly, what will we be covering this week? We will be comparing licensed versus unlicensed concrete contractors. We sure will be. It's kind of a fun topic, isn't it? Yeah. So, Magnus, do you know what it means to be a licensed contractor? Not really. Not really? Yeah. I didn't know what a licensed contractor was at your age, neither. Carly, do you know? Um, like someone, like the state knows that you have a business and they test you to make sure that you you know what you're doing and that you can really do strangers concrete work there you go so according to the to miriam webster the definition of licensed as a noun is a permission granted by competent authority to engage in a business occupation or in an activity that is otherwise unlawful so I mean, right there, you know, you're, you're looking at the gist of it. If you're unlicensed, you're unlawful. So, Carly, do you think I needed to be tested to become a licensed contractor? Yes, for sure. Of course I did. It was a huge event in my life. Um, you know, when I went through the process of being tested and licensed, it was a really huge, big deal for us. So, To break it down in a nutshell... A licensed contractor has proven to the state that they know what they are doing and the state has granted a license. Pretty much nailed it, huh? Yeah. So Carly, do you usually shop around to find the things you want at the lowest possible price? With with most things I do. Yeah. Not with my baby dolls though. Not the baby dolls, huh? You, you pay full price for all your baby dolls? Or just the... Uh, Ashton Drake ones. Um, pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah, you had to cut corners with your baby dolls. So if you are like most people, you want to do the right thing. You know you may regret hiring an unlicensed contractor, but why exactly? I'm not going to lie. You can save big bucks. And they may even do an outstanding job. And for certain small jobs, real tiny jobs, it might even be their you know, a wise choice. Um, so, Magnus. Yes? What's your favorite scary movie? Um. Halloween. Halloween, that's your favorite? Yes. Who's the bad guy in that one? Michael Myers. Can you talk a little louder, please? Michael Myers. Michael Myers, yeah. Lots of people are scared of Michael Myers. If you think that's scary, wait till you hear some horror stories from our customers over the years. There may be one that changes your mind about using an unlicensed contractor. So what are we calling the first case, Carly? The Half Down No Show. The Half Down No Show. I've heard this one several times and it breaks my heart every time I hear it. The customer is given half down to a smooth talking salesman with a deal way too good to be true this one goes well beyond unlicensed to flat out criminal it's kind of a sad situation isn't it guys yeah yeah it's really really horrible it makes it tough for us too because the customer has serious trust issues by the time we get there and it's really unfortunate because the victim has no recourse to even attempt to get the money back because the phone number they got off craigslist no longer works so, I guess often what it comes down to is if the price seems too good to be true, just run the other way. So, Carly. Yes. Who do you think would have to pay for the for concrete that I ordered if it showed up on a job site and the guys weren't there to take it? That would be you, Dad. It surely would, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So, what do we call this next section? Southbounded and down. Southbound and down. 
I've taken over missing contractor jobs quite a few times over the years. A reoccurring storyline is that the contractor has been arrested and is unable to complete the job. The worst one I recall was where the homeowner was responsible to pay for the concrete that showed up and uh, when it got there nobody was there to place it. So you know I mean this sort of thing is a huge red flag. If the contractor you hired is asking you to pay for the concrete directly when it gets there you know I mean it's probably because the ReadyMix plant knows something you don't and don't trust that contractor to pay. Unfortunately this con this customer I'm talking about right now um, ended up paying far more than if they just hired us in the first place and I guess the good news in it is that they will for surely never make that mistake again. Carly do you know what insurance is? Aflac. That's right. We do have Affleck insurance too, actually. But um, do you know what what that Affleck insurance is, though? Something you pay every month. So if there's an accident, the insurance company pays instead of you. That pretty much nails it. I don't have anything to add to that. I don't think. Did a good job. Well, in this next section I will. So what is what is the next scenario, Carly? The injured guest. The injured guest. So here's the news flash for you. If your contractor isn't licensed, they probably aren't properly insured either. Um, when, when somebody on their crew falls on a stake and ends up in the ER, it's most likely going to end up getting turned into your homeowner's insurance. I mean, hopefully it does, because that's probably the best case scenario you'd be looking at. But uh, most people don't even consider how much of a headache this whole thing could be if that happens. Magnus, have you ever started on something and then quit because you realized it was just too hard? Yes. <laughs> what might that be? The whole next door for my fort. The whole next door for your fort. Yeah. So he was hoping to build a fort like he saw online. And he was going to dig a hole and then put some branches over the top so he'd kind of have a half underground fort. And uh, once he got to dig in the hole, he realized that it was a lot more work than uh, what he had signed up for. So that, that project's on hold for a while. Maybe when he's eight. Maybe when you're eight, huh? Maybe pick it back up when you turn eight. <laughs> well, you're, you're doing good with football, though. You haven't given up on that, right? Yeah. yeah you're kind of kicking butt, aren't you? Yeah. You gonna stick with your cheerleading too, Carly? Yes. Yeah. You got that, that, uh, what moves were you working on the other day? The cartwheel? You got yeah. that done yet? Um, I'm closer to being able to do it on the trampoline. Yeah. You're not doing it on the ground yet, though, huh? <laughs> Let's go, Broncos! Broncos. Broncos, let's go! Alright. Anyway, the Miranda Broncos. That's who we were playing with. So, Carly, what is the next section called? C cutting losses. Cutting losses. Now, being a responsible adult usually comes with fulfilling your obligations. If I make an agreement to do something, I will do it come hell or high water. Pardon my French. Not everyone is like that though. We bid on a job a while back and the customer called and said he really wanted us to do the work but had received the bid for half the price. He was hoping I could adjust the price but it was just too much I couldn't you know. And uh, he called back a month or more later and he asked if we could come pour concrete into the forms that somebody else had set up. So that got my curiosity up, so I drove over there and took a look, and and unfortunately it was a pretty badly botched setup, so I had to, you know, just tell him it was going to be the original bid amount to start over. The contractor he had hired sent a couple guys over there to set it up one week, and uh, well, they ended up busting the step off and, and doing all sorts of terrible things, but um, anyways, 
then the next week a finisher showed up and sat in the shade waiting for the concrete to show up for four hours. Um, before leaving that day, the finisher offered a shoulder shrug to communicate the current status with the homeowner. Uh, but all attempts to reach the contractor failed. Best we could tell, he realized it was a losing endeavor and decided to cut his losses. Pretty scary stuff, huh? Yeah. And people yeah. would be able to do that sort of thing. It's hard to believe that people can sleep at night after doing that. So, Carly, do you ever remember a time when you wanted a new baby doll, but were short on money? Yes. You do, huh? What did you end up doing to get that money? Every chore on my list in one day instead of the whole week. So you took all your week's chores and you did them all in one single day? Yes. You're crazy. And we had, and um, part of that that you had given me and brother to do was to stack the little concrete bricks on the paver next door. Oh, that pile of pavers next door, yeah. That came in. That was a fun one, huh? Yeah. I should find more of those for you to do. Yay. So who, which baby you got this week? Teresa. What's the, the story with Teresa? Um, so the story with her is she's the one that I was doing all the chores for and um, doing the um, bricks and stuff, or the pavers for because I really wanted her and I didn't but I didn't have enough money for her so I decided I was gonna work for the money and then as soon as I got the last dollar that I needed I ran to mom and told her that I finally had enough money and that I wanted her to order the baby doll. Well that's good. And here she is, Teresa. Say hi to Teresa. No B S T onesie again? No. <laughs> Maybe next time. I mean I get one of those things printed on. So, what is our next category, Carly? The squeeze treatment. The squeeze treatment. Unfortunately, even other licensed contractors in town seem to use this tactic. Heck, I think I might have even used it a few times back in 2016. The homeowner feels like they are neglected and the project will never end. They may not even know it, but the contractor is most likely running around town starting 10 jobs at a time to get deposits to fund other things. And when they do this, they, uh, they'll, they'll get the job started, be there for one day, and then move on to the next one for one day, move on to the next one for one day, and then they try to just start it over and just keep trying to make everybody happy and making everybody unhappy at the same time. So. Magnus, what other things might the contractors need that money for when they run around collecting all that? Bills, mud, taxes. Taxes, yeah. That's a good one. You probably hear me talk about taxes quite a bit, don't you? Yeah. All sorts of other things. And uh, many in the business, licensed or not, really don't understand how much they need to charge to not only perform the work profitably, but also to stand behind their warranties cover unexpected breakdowns and deal with unforeseen issues and uh, man there's a lot of unforeseen issues let me tell you the result is that your four-day job gets drug out for several weeks until they finally get done or you get tired of it and call a reputable company to finish it Carly do you remember when we tried to look up that company that your brothers that made your brothers chopper little, little motorcycle yeah, they were like, they like disappeared from the internet. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with that, but uh, for some reason... We could not find them. Yeah, that company went out of business, and, and we couldn't even find them, you know, so... You know, I mean, no big deal for us, but... But uh, this next section is even a worse scenario. What's our next section called, Curly? The company no longer exists. Yep, that company no longer exists. This one really makes people angry, and I don't blame them. Imagine, if you will, calling the contractor that just installed concrete for you a few months ago, 
They answer the same old phone number with a different company name. It's a bit confusing, but you know you're talking to the same person as before. You tell them it's no hurry, but you require warranty work on a driveway that failed. And then you hear, I'm sorry, the company that performed that work no longer exists. Could you imagine that, guys? That would probably be pretty but There'd be terrible. smoke coming out of my ears. Yeah, I don't know about you, but the steam would pour out of my ears, that's for sure. This is a true story, and the sad part is they're still bidding work at too low of a price and thinking they're doing their customers a favor by undercharging. They have a new unregistered company name and will eventually change names again once the bad, bad business practices catch up. So Magnus, have you ever bought something because it was cheaper and then later wished you bought the higher quality version? Yes. And what what do you do now to make sure that you're getting the high quality you version? You have to check the name tag and make sure it's made in the USA. Yeah, he, his big thing now is make sure it's made in the USA, you know. And um, for our customers, you know, I hope it's make sure that your your contractor's license, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so the scary thing is that this stuff happens all the time. We hear news stories far too often. If you think it won't happen to you, gosh, I sure hope you're right. You have a voice in your head that tells you when something is too good to be true. Listen to it. So, I guess we'll sign it off then, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for taking the time to watch. We will be back next Sunday from the backyard kitchen answering more questions you didn't know you needed to ask about concrete. Remember, there is no crying in concrete other than the tears of joy brought about by a job well done. Nice job, guys. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye.